this is Rhi here. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. Don't forget to check out my website, paradoxastrology.com. I can help you with anything. And if you would like more exclusive videos that I don't post on YouTube, consider subscribing to my Patreon. It also helps support this channel. Okay, let's get into this video. I just want to make a quick video because I had a really good experience the other day, lucid dreaming, and it really helped me understand how reality actually operates, which I did, but when you have the experience, it really helps elevate you. And so as I've explained, I think I've explained a couple times, I do a lot of spiritual work all day. Basically, that's all I do, plus videos and consultations. Up to now, I do about three to four hours a day of spiritual work. And a lot of that has to do with practicing Tantra, Pramayana, yoga, different things of that nature. We'll stop there. We won't say exactly what I do, but those are the things that I practice right now. So these things have really helped excel me especially doing it for this amount of time. Now, if you really want to change your life, you're going to have to do a 15, 20 minute meditation is not going to do it, right? You don't have to do it excessively like I am. I'm doing it to this amount because I do have goals of being a priestess, a tantric priestess, and that could change in the future, but spirituality is my ultimate goal. I will be happy if I'm just a yogi for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's what I ultimately came here for. Now, because of these things, I've been having so many spiritual experiences. It's amazing. I have a spiritual experiences when I wake up and then I take a nap. When I take a nap, that's when I've had premonitions that came like before COVID, huge premonition, knew exactly what was going to happen, but lucid dreaming. And I grew up lucid dreaming. When I was young, I'd have lucid dreams where I was so afraid to go to sleep because I would always wake up in my dreams and I didn't understand what a lucid dream was. I just thought I was stuck in my dream. So I would walk around for hours stuck in my dream trying to find ways to wake myself up. And this was like in grade school and I'm like, how do I wake myself up? I don't know. And I was like really afraid to go to sleep because my dream would keep going. There'd be like scary things in my dreams. And I thought I was just stuck in this kind of like dream reality of trying to wake my body up and so lucid dreaming has been a part of my whole life my kundalini was still awakened all through grade school and i had a lot of very spiritual experience that i understand now i didn't understand at the time so lucid dreaming is not new to me but this dream was really trying to help me understand reality as a whole now when i went to sleep and i started dreaming that I went into a room and my brother was there and I went to go sleep in the bed next to him. And then all of a sudden he woke up and then he was kind of being mean to me and saying some mean things. And then it triggered in my head. I'm like, oh, this isn't him. Oh, I'm dreaming. Oh, okay, I'm dreaming. Then I knew that I was dreaming and I said, okay, I don't have that much time before I slip back into this dream. So I got to do everything I can while I know this is a dream. So I run downstairs and then I see my mom. My mom's been passed away since 2006. She's there cooking breakfast and it's spaghetti for my brother. It's kind of weird to have spaghetti for breakfast. And she's wearing a ski mask, which is also odd as well. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a dream. It's not supposed to make sense. But I'm so happy that I see my mom who's been dead for a long time. And I go up to her and I'm like, mom, mom, this, this isn't real. This is a dream. I have to tell you this before I wake up. I need to tell you, I love you and no one's mad at you because my mom died because of alcoholism and anorexia. I've forgiven her. So I saw her and I told her, I forgive you. I need to let you know this. This is actually a dream. Like none of this is actually real. And then she didn't respond. Then I went to go tell my dad. I'm like, I got to go tell my dad that I'm lucid dreaming right now. And I started talking to my dad and he wasn't listening to me. And I left. And as soon as I got upset, I slipped back into the dream and forgot it was a lucid dream. When I woke up, I understood that that is how reality works. Reality works that once you get caught up in your emotions, once you get caught up in the stories, that's when you start slipping back into the Maya and the illusion of this reality. So the most important thing for you to do is not to get caught up in your emotions. 
not to get caught up in the stories, in the fear, and any of that, because that is ultimately what keeps you in the illusion. That's why yogis practice detachment. It's not that you don't love something. To love something isn't to be attached to it. To love something is to give it its own individuality, let it be itself, is not to be overly attached to anything. Once you get overly attached to something, you're going into the illusion, it's not real now. The only way to see reality is to disconnect from your emotions. The more you disconnect from it, the more you're going to see how this is only made up of energy, how we're living in timelessness and the ego is only creating the illusion of time because the ego has to grasp on to things to create time. It has to grasp on to a story to create time. It has to grasp on to the fear of death in order to create time. Even advanced people will say that all you have to do is live in the present moment. But if you understand there is no future and there is no past and there is no present moment, that in itself is the ego trying to create time again. That's how the ego will always get you in these traps. So that's why the complete disconnection from what is, is important. And we're afraid of that because the ego starts thinking that we're going to lose ourselves if we do that. But no, you'll only lose yourself if you get overly attached to things. As I was looking through my closet, I realized how much we accumulate and we can't take with us. Remember that all of this is unnecessary attachment. When you find yourself saying, oh, I need this to be happier. I need this or I need this shirt or I need this car. I need this. Oh, now you're an ego. Now you've lost all your power. That's not power. Why do you think a yogi doesn't have any money, doesn't have a driver's license, doesn't have a car, doesn't have any of these things, but he is spiritually enlightened. They think that a spiritually enlightened person would have unlimited abundance, which is almost like what we're taught, but that's not true. That's why they denounce everything because the less you're attached to, the more you can see reality. The more things you accumulate, the more you're put into this illusionary state of the Maya of this false persona that your ego created for yourself. It's not you. Just like me presenting myself like this, you're seeing me in one way, but is that me? It's not me. The only way you could see me is not seeing the physical. The only way you could see me is energetically. This is just how my ego chooses to present itself. So that's why certain agendas are pushed onto us for us to completely attach to our physical personality, our being, our sex, our gender, all of these things. When we are none of those things, these are just how our soul is projected into this consciousness at this time. But don't get overly attached. That part isn't really you. All of that is taking you away from figuring out who you really are because who you really are has nothing to do with the physical. And you can actually change your physical reality by tapping into who you really are completely changes your physical reality. So to try to change the physical to feel better is completely delusional. What the lucid dream taught me is not being attached to the emotions because our physical reality works like a dream. And the only way we get caught up in these stories and these illusions is from our ego grasping on to things so that it doesn't feel like it's going to die. But we are in a state where constantly our ego is making up the meaning, but it is inherently meaningless. That's why blessed, if you think about it, is the word be less. To be ultimately blessed is to be less, to be less attached to what it is. And to be blessed is a form of being enlightened. Enlightenment means the letting go of what isn't real. The more you just let things be, let them be as they are, the more you'll see the truth. That's why the truth will never come in books. You can read about all of these things. You can read about non-duality. You can read about spirituality, but you'll never actually understand it until you've experienced it. And that means through the meditative practices, through lucid dreaming, through what your higher consciousness shows you, that is the ultimate way to understand spirituality. It will never be truly understood through books or videos. And I'm making this video trying to explain to you spirituality, but I can see 
what that actually means is that you're never going to really truly understand what I'm saying unless you do the work, which is just means sitting by yourself. Sometimes we get attached to all these spiritual methods now. Now we're getting attached to, I need to do the spiritual method at this time to do this ritual and this for my enlightenment. And then now we're stuck in ego again, attached to spirituality for our ego. Ultimately, to not get caught up in your own emotions or any story. Let things be. Let the universe take care of itself. It naturally takes care of itself. It'll naturally take care of you. And then you'll start to see the truth. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one.